Hey everyone, my name is Corel, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics in From the Depths, tilt rotors. In order to help explain this topic, I have loaded in this vehicle that uses tilt rotors. This is really not a finished vehicle. The AI is not tuned. I've got all sorts of weird things going on with it. And uh, this particular vehicle, I think I'd uh, pretty much actually abandoned my uh, work on. But it will serve to give us a general idea of what tilt rotors are, what we can do with them, and how they should be configured. Alright, so first off, what is a tilt rotor? Well, a tilt rotor is pretty much any propulsion method on a spin block, the way I define it. Uh, we're using these to control more than one axis of movement that the uh, spin block normally gives us. Normally, when you stick a spin block down or a dedicated helicopter blade, it gives you one translational axis of movement. Uh, by adding a spin block into the mix and placing that on a spin block here, uh, we get that an additional uh, axis of movement on that uh, translational axis. We add a rotational axis in there. And the weird thing is that while one translational axis can, in theory, depending on placement, uh, handle three different uh, axes of control, uh, with a proper spin block in there, you can handle up to five indirectly. You can handle four axes of movement directly and one indirectly. Uh, so this is really useful and there's not a whole lot that you can't do with these once you figure out how to tune them. So uh, first thing to talk about is whether you use jets or dedicated helicopter blades. This vehicle is obviously using dedicated helicopter blades in there and regular helicopter blades can be used too. I just tend to prefer the dedicated versions uh, mostly because the um, non-dedicated helicopter blades calculate collision and they do so on every frame of rotation. Now that means that your uh, processor is having to do a lot of work to calculate collision as those rotors are turning and that never stops. So that's very inefficient on your uh, processor and it tends to make the game run fairly slowly when a complex vehicle using dedicated spin blocks, or uh, the traditional helicopter blades rather, uh, are loaded in. So you want to try and avoid using that probably as much as possible just so that you don't have to deal with the slowdowns from that. All right, so the main controversy then is between dedicated spin blocks and jets. And really you can use either. Uh, if I look at my air tab here, I've got these jet engines selected. These are only obviously going to give me thrust in one direction, same with ion thrusters and same with custom jets, compared to the dedicated blades that can give me thrust in two directions. So the dedicated blades are a little bit more flexible, I think. They obviously take up more space. Uh, you can pack jet engines in a lot tighter. And so there's a little bit of a trade-off there. The Deta blades can overall actually give you more thrust. I'm going to unlock this vehicle so it doesn't go crazy here with its PIDs. Uh, the dedicated blades can actually give you a little bit more thrust overall, but the um, jet engines are going to be able to be packed in more tightly, which means that really it's pretty much a wash as far as the amount of power you get out of it. Now, the Deta blades are cheaper. You have 25 cost for the initial spinner. You've got 10 cost for a pole extender. This particular vehicle uses two of those per rotor. You've got three materials per extension. And then you've got the armor cost, which actually tends to dwarf the actual cost of the spin blocks themselves. That's not a whole lot of cost. You compare that to a jet engine. Even the small jet engines are 50 materials a piece. The huge ones are 450. And if you place several of those, you're gonna be spending a lot of materials. Additionally, if you have a, a jet-based uh, tilt rotor, then you probably want to put a jet on the top of the tilt rotor as well as the bottom. So if I was to try and place one of these, I would probably place one, if I edit this here, I would probably place one there as well as down here. And I'm gonna turn these off so that I don't actually uh, throw my vehicle completely for a loop. And so yeah, uh, I would probably place one of these on each side so that I can replicate the ability to thrust in either direction, uh, similar to what this dead blade gives me. Now you can do away with this top one if your vehicle weighs enough. 
that's a kind of a complex subject as to what enough is, but uh, more or less if your vehicle is fairly heavy compared to the amount of thrust you have, then you can get away without this downwards facing thruster a lot better. Uh, more or less, this is going to come down to do I have enough thrust here uh, or enough downwards pressure that I can uh, roll and pitch and maneuver effectively with this tilt rotor. And uh, that's a very hard thing to determine up front. You really just kind of have to play around with it. But uh, yeah, you probably do want at least some form of thrust facing downwards in most cases, uh, as well as your upwards facing thrust. Now, um, this isn't the only orientation for tilt rotors. If I go ahead and destroy this vehicle and load in another. So this is a jet that's effectively using tilt rotors. Now you'll notice that I don't have a uh, jet on the front of it facing backwards. And zoom out here so you don't have to listen to that custom jet engine noise. Um, the uh, tilt rotors are oriented differently. These are oriented facing forwards. Now that's important in this case because the custom jet engine over there is providing the majority of the forwards thrust. This vehicle will fly without the use of these tilt rotors. So why are they there? Well in this case, they're providing me additional lift and roll control. Now by tilting upwards, by tilting both of these upwards, they're both in front of the center of mass. So that's going to give me pitch upwards. Uh, that helps control the vehicle better. Uh, more than I have with just tailplanes or the ailerons. Uh, they can also tilt one up and one down, and that gives me a bit of roll. These are also using uh, ion engines, so those have thrust in space, and that's very useful because having thrust in space means that for this jet, if it flies out into space accidentally, I have a way of getting down because the custom jet engine is entirely enough to power the vehicle while near the surface, but if it gets out into space, it does not apply power any longer. Neither do any of my wings, any of my ailerons, any of my tailplanes, none of those provide any force any longer. But if I provide enough axes of control via these tilt rotors with ion engines, then I can actually get down from space and expect to be able to return to a normal state of flight. Uh, so that is very useful for this particular vehicle because custom jet engines are very easy to damage or destroy and they're fairly near the, this one is in particular is fairly near this vehicle's ammo stockpile. So if those go up, odds are some of the custom jet engine is going too. And that means that uh, only these things on the outside would be able to keep me going. And if I happen to fly up into space because of that damage, well, these can actually keep me kind of in the fight a little bit. All right, so I've wiped out the other vehicles. Let's go ahead and start building a tilt rotor vehicle from scratch. Uh, first off, I'm gonna build a triangular vehicle. Uh, there's actually a reason for building this as a triangular vehicle, and that's to demonstrate a point. And let's just go ahead and do something like this, and we will ignore that for now. Uh, let's just keep going like so. And more or less what I'm trying to do here is just demonstrate how a uh, how exactly a triangular vehicle can function with tilt rotors. And oops, um, so this is going to be a good demonstration because I'm going to build a vehicle with two tilt rotors and one other rotor that is fixed and use that to demonstrate exactly why and how tilt rotors work. Uh, so we're going to need some mass on this thing. Uh, we're going to want some actual weight to it to prove this, you know, uh, make this more actually vehicle-like. And so let's go ahead and grab, let's just put some lead blocks on here. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a bunch of lead beams under the center here. That should be enough weight. And let's go ahead and throw in just our usual normal little AI or uh, resource setup here for power. Uh, let's throw in, let's say, a pair of RTGs and a little stack of batteries. Let's just get the 3x3 three three versions and stack these up, maybe twice as large as the RTGs. And then we're just going to grab a pair of electric engines, slap those in here. 
And let's go ahead and polish off the frame of this just a little bit. So we're going to grab a two meter beam and fill in this back section. And actually, let's go ahead and do two meter slopes. And we're just going to kind of pretty this up a little bit. I'm not going to go all out with the aesthetics of this vehicle. Obviously, it's kind of a throwaway. So we're just going to plop this in here. And let's go ahead and stick a nice little wedge on there. Uh, let's go with a two meter. Alrighty. So this is more or less, well, let's come back and go with one meter. Yeah, that's the, that maintains the slope. All right, so this is more or less a sample vehicle. Uh, now you'll note there's a lot of weight in the center here. Our center of mass is fairly well centered. Uh, I might go ahead and play with that a little bit later just as a demonstration. But for now, this will work to prove our theory that we can entirely maneuver a vehicle with one fixed rotor and two tilt rotors. So first off, let's go ahead and throw in our fixed rotor. That will be fairly simple. We're just going to build a dedicated spinner and we're going to stick two pull extenders on it and we're going to throw, uh, let's go two data blades in each direction. Uh, this is all pretty easy, nothing terribly complex here. And there we go. So let's just go ahead and throw the motor drive all the way up. And we are going to use this as a pitcher and a pusher. And that's all there is to it, really. That's good and enable our strafe and hover axes. Yeah, uh, that's all we've got to it. Um, this is going to be used for pitching up and down and for pushing the vehicle up and down. Really simple. Now, the complex part is going to come from actually building the rotors. And in order to do that, I'm going to build a rotor over here on this little winglet. And then I'm going to come back to it and prefab that rotor. And then we're going to place it onto spin blocks. Uh, so that's a little bit of a multi-step process there. I find that prefabbing things before putting them on the spin blocks, especially in the case of tilt rotors that are supposed to be more or less symmetrical, uh, really helps to keep them uh, sane to construct. Uh, if you try and prefab or use a um, sub-object, uh, that can get a little bit hairy when you start talking about mirror lines and how that mirrors across the vehicle. All right, so first things first, we're going to need a metal block. Uh, that's going to be kind of the center line. And let's go ahead and just stick some, uh, yeah, let's go with three meter slopes. And what this is going to do is we have a center line up here that's going to be three tall. And then we're going to have two blocks of open space in each direction. So we're getting basically the same size rotors we have up there in the front in each direction. And we're going to plop these down like so. And then we're just going to stick, uh, this is going to be stupidly simple and very, very ugly, but we're going to stick some uh, beams there. And I'm actually going to stick one in the center as a temporary framework. We're going to stick another block there and some more three meter slopes, getting us to the top of this rotor. And this is just framing. This isn't technically necessary. Uh, you could just have the spin block open to air, but I find having a little bit of armor framework around there makes it a lot more likely that this thing is going to survive some sort of a direct hit with, say, a kinetic round. An explosive round is still going to play havoc with this because these spin blocks are not particularly well armored, but we can do at least something to make sure that we're not going to fall apart at the first time anything looks at us funny. So uh, again here, I'm just going in and adding these uh, rotors. And there we go. So now I'm going to prefab this and I'm going to hit middle mouse to free up my cursor. We're going to go with a seven width, five height and seven length for the prefab. And we're going to start capturing and then a middle mouse so that I can move my mouse around. And okay. So now, um, yeah, I want to clear that out and actually recapture that because I didn't have the framing set correctly. And then I want to save that and I'm going to save that in air components as, let's see, a tilt rotor example. Okay. 
Now, uh, that is all well and good. I can grab just a basic block here and just start breaking this off the vehicle. Okay, so this should go away now. And what I'm going to do is start placing my spin blocks now. The spin blocks are a little bit trickier to place. I like to place these with the upwards arrow on this block uh, orientation facing the direction of thrust. Now that's not always going to be the case, and you might want something different for your own vehicles, but that's the way I like to start out. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, oop, uh, that did not uh, go the way I wanted, because I did not have my mirror line set correctly, so I'm going to replace that real quick so I can re-break it, get that all synced up across the mirror line. Now I'm going to grab a spin turn block, and I orient it upwards, and I'm going to place it like so. Uh, now, this, uh, now that I'm on the prefab, or on the spin block, I can go into prefab mode, and I'm going to place this prefab that I just created. Now, if I look at this, you'll note that there is one side of this on the left, as our view is looking at it, that is, uh, has a gap between the rotor and the metal, and there's one side on the right uh, that does not have a gap. The side without the gap is the side where the spin block rotor, or the actual spin block component is. And then the uh, top side there is where the um, uh, top of the shaft is, or the end of the shaft that uh, is not connected to the metal. So I like to have the spin block at the bottom just for consistency's sake. It makes it easy to remember. And I have now have a spin block. So, uh, rotor, or easy, uh, yeah. Uh, whatever I'm calling these things. Tilt rotor, that's it. That's the word. So now we're going to go in here and do the same thing on the other side. And you'll note that I keep this exactly aligned with the other side. And we're going to go into prefabs again. I'm going to use the same prefab. Again, I've got the solid side on the bottom, the side with the gap at the top, and I'm going to place that like so. Alright, now uh, if I just grab some more metal, I'm going to grab a 2 meter beam, and we're going to fill in this gap a little bit. Uh, one thing I like to do is to inset my uh, spin blocks into the hole of the vehicle a bit, and then I like to armor around them, because if you think about the most likely thing to happen damage-wise as far as spin blocks go, these are not particularly durable spin blocks, and if something hits them or looks at them funny or pretends to sneeze on them, they're probably going to fall apart. And that's not what I want, so I like to stick just a little bit of armor around there just to make it less likely that something's going to hit these and blow them to shreds. So that is all done, and we can start moving on to setting up the actual controls. Alright, so I've gone, gone ahead and done a little bit more building here. Uh, we've got a chair on a pole and a vehicle controller on a pole set into air mode. Now, this is actually kind of an important step. Uh, before I stick AI on this vehicle, I'm going to try and use my manual air controls in order to uh, kind of set up and debug the spin blocks. Now, when you're setting up uh, spin blocks, those can be difficult enough to set up, but they're fixed on the hole. So if I go on to, if I hit Q on this and go into spin rate control, you can see I've got pusher and pitcher presets. Those are great. That's fine. This knows exactly what I want out of it, and if I want to, I can just right-click on both of these, and it will set up more or less everything that I want from the translational and rotational movement axes. That's great. But if I go over to the spin blocks, and the rotor's on there, and let's go ahead and hit Q on these, which is a little harder. There we go. Uh, first off, I want motor drive on these, and the spin rate control. I've got pusher and turner presets. Well, turner presets is going to do pitch control. Okay, that's not necessarily what we want. Uh, yeah, this is good for translation. Yeah, this is good for yaw, or rather yaw rather than pitch. Uh, but if I turn this spin block up, how is that going to help me yaw? The answer is it's not. So this is not what I want. Uh, the From the Depths uh, control setup system is not going to be able to predetermine what you want when you start working with spin blocks and tilt rotors, so 
you start getting pretty quickly into manual setup and configuration. So what we're gonna do here is go on to these rotors first and start configuring these. And this is where the manual controls come in because we need to be able to set these very carefully. Now if I hold E first off, I can zoom out and I can get a pretty good view of what's going on, especially if I drag this over to the side a little bit and uh, reshape that so that I can see what's going on on the screen. So, first things first. Let's go ahead and reset everything, because uh, these defaults are not useful for us. First off, we want these things to be used for hover, and we probably only want about 80% of that to be used for hover. Why is that? Well, we want to reserve some control for the other things that we're going to be doing. Um, when you start dealing with tilt rotors, you start, want, you start wanting to not drive everything at the maximum possible rate all the time. You need to reserve a little bit of power for everything else that you're doing because these rotors are going to be doing a lot of different things a lot of times. So um, now this is set to 24 when we're hearing up and negative 24 when we're hearing down. That's out of 30. So we've got a value of six that we're able to use for other, other stuff. That's great. So uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at roll first. Uh, let's go ahead and set that to 0.2. Now, when we hear roll right, that's going to set us to a value of six, which is in the positive direction. That's the same as when we hear up. So that's great. If we hear an up, we're going to push this side of the vehicle up. If we hear a roll right, we're going to push the left side of the vehicle up. That is what we want. So if we look again at the yaw controls, we're actually going to do a little bit of the same thing. If we get a yaw right control, we're also going to get a 0.2 value here. Now that's a little important, um, and it's not immediately obvious as to why. This has no yaw control authority on it in its current orientation. But what we're going to do is use the spin block when we receive a yaw command to rotate this in order to gain a little bit of extra uh, yaw control authority. Um, so we're going to be able to use this spin block in the yaw, the up, the roll right, and the forwards back direction. And we're also going to set forwards back to 0.2. Um, and in fact, if we take a look at this, up and forwards are very likely to be used in conjunction with each other. However, up is not likely to be used at full drive all the time. That's important to note. Um, because, well, once we get up to our intended altitude, up is not going to be driven at full, so we will have more control authority to be used for these other uh, movement uh, axes. Now you'll note that I haven't set this to use pitch. Uh, however, this is behind the center of mass. Really, uh, we can use these for pitch as well, but we have a spin block up here that is much further away from the center of mass and is therefore probably a better fit to use for pitch control authority, especially since this spin block is not on a tilt rotor and therefore cannot do nearly as much. So uh, really, I don't need to use these back here for uh, pitch. It's already handled for me. Uh, so I'm not gonna set these up for pitch at all. So uh, I'm and that's just in order to maintain the amount of control authority that I can exert for my other axes. So uh, if I started using this for pitch, it would be fighting with all of these other control inputs and uh, for actually driving this rotor. And that's not really useful. So I'm gonna copy these settings and we're gonna go over to the other rotor over here on the right side, and we're gonna paste these in. However, the roll and yaw are different here. So if I set this to roll left, that is correct, because this is on the right side of the vehicle. I want to drive this upwards if I want to roll to the left. So if I actually hit Q on this and use E to uh, pin the control in place, so I'm not editing that, and I can move around with the mouse. Um, so now if I use this to roll left, uh, that is going to set this to 6 when I hear a roll left command. This is on the right side of the vehicle, right of the center of mass, so positive value is going to drive the right side of the vehicle up, which is a roll left. That's what I want. 
However, the yaw nose right and yaw nose left are incorrect. I want to invert these. Again, I can either do this with the sliders or I can just hit minus in front of that value there. And now I have a yaw left when I hear a positive value. So uh, that is what I want. Uh, all of this is set up correctly. Um, and in fact, on thinking about it, I really don't want yaw control here. Uh, I will get into that later. For now, I'm going to leave that and uh, we'll note that as a bug that is going to happen so that I can show you a little bit of how to debug that later. So we've entirely been working on the rotor itself for now. What about the spin blocks? Well, the spin blocks are the tricky part. Uh, spin block here, if I look at this, uh, again, I'm going to set motor drive to 10 because I want this to be able to move any amount of weight on it. And really, this isn't going to be moving a whole lot back and forth. Uh, we do not want to use the spin rate control tab here. We want to use the angle control. All right, so what all can we control with this? Well, first, uh, hover needs to be off. Well, that's not really intuitive because this spin block is being used for hover, but uh, we really don't want hover to do anything. We want the hover to be at zero, and we're at zero already. So why would we use hover? Uh, no, that's not necessary. So instead, we want forwards back. So if we use forward back translational movement on this, it's going to allow us to tilt the translational control authority provided by that spin block and push it in a specific direction. So we're effectively taking this from a pure upwards translational uh, thruster and turning it into a little bit of forward thrust. So we're going to set a little bit of value there. And this, in fact, might be too much. This is probably entirely too much, in fact, but we'll get into that later uh, when we start debugging. So that's great. Uh, we're also going to set a little bit of yaw, and this is going to increase it when we hear yaw nose right. That is incorrect because when we hear yaw nose right, what we want to do is tilt this rotor backwards. Uh, effectively, we want to use the translational uh, control authority generated by the rotor, and we want to turn that backwards so that we're driving the right side of the vehicle left, uh, or rather, we're driving the right side of the vehicle backwards, uh, which is going to yaw the nose right. So when we want to, uh, we want a negative control direction to effectively drive the right side of the vehicle backwards. So we're going to use negative yaw left control authority, and we're going to set that to 0.2 for now. That's just going to be our default value that we're going to use for all of these for now. This is going to break things. Important to note. Um, and I will show you why exactly later. So over here, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to set up motor drive. We're going to set up angle control. Forwards back is the same as on the opposite side. Yaw is going to be the opposite as it was on the other side. So um, forwards and back tend to be the same value. Any rotational movement tends to be the opposite value from side to side. OK, so uh, all that is set up. Let's go ahead and start testing things. So the first thing we probably want to test is our pitch. And to do that, I'm going to use this uh, vehicle air controller in the uh, U uh, button. And you can see that is controlling our spin block. OK, so um, the AI is going to control this a little bit differently than our vehicle controller, mostly due to the presence of PIDs. Those PIDs are going to kind of temper the outputs and make sure that there's a constant control output going out there. And that's going to be useful for the purposes of our dedicated spinners. Uh, we don't need to ramp those up and down necessarily. So uh, first things first, we want to hit the backslash key, and that's near your enter key. And that shows the forces on the vehicle. Here you can see I've got a blue line leading from the center of mass downwards. That's indicating that we have uh, mass pushing us downwards. If I hit U, you can see that is trying to pitch the nose down. That is correct. If I hit J, that's trying to pitch the nose up. That is correct. We're getting a white line out of the pitch value on this thing. That is all correct. So next thing we want to do is try and, let's say, roll left. And so you can see, uh, if we're trying to roll left with this vehicle controller, the spin block on the right 
is getting positive control, the spin block on the left is getting negative control. If I was to detach, uh, or rather unlock this vehicle, and hit H, you can see we're going to roll to the left. That's what we want. Good. Now, uh, roll right, we'll do the exact opposite thing. That is what we want. So we've verified the pitch and roll. Now, there's one more control axis, and that's the yaw. So that is Y and I. So if I set Y, okay, that's not what we want. And why is that? Well, uh, first things first, uh, we're hitting yaw to the left. And usually what you want here, we are adding negative control authority to this rotor over here, and we're turning it forwards which means what this is doing is effectively driving us, or driving the left side of the vehicle backwards. While that is correct, and if I unlock it here and hit, uh, sorry, not U, uh, if I hit Y, that is going to pitch us, but it's also going to generate a roll control signal, because that's literally the exact same thing that we do for roll. We drive the right side upwards and the left side downwards. That's not good, that's not what we want. So in order to combat this, what we're actually going to do is go in here to the spin rate control, we're actually going to turn off the yaw signal on our rotational movement. And this doesn't seem immediately obvious, but what we're effectively doing here is relying on our weight for yaw control. Now that doesn't make a whole lot of sense at first, but what we're doing is the vehicle is being pressured constantly downwards by the center of mass. So we have a constant downwards force coming from here. That means that our lift control over here is always going to be going off because it's going to be trying to counter that when we're in normal flight. Uh, we're always going to be trying to lift upwards in order to maintain an altitude. That means these already have speed on them. These are already being driven upwards. And that's actually very useful to us. So uh, what we have here is a scenario where these are already spinning and we don't need to add rotational movement to these, we just have to turn our spin block in the correct direction. Now, uh, we have angle control on these, we have yaw left on this one, if we hit Y here to simulate a yaw left, this one is correct, the one on the other side is wrong. That is because these spin blocks are in the same orientation and being told to do opposite things, but they're not quite in the same orientation, they're both facing up, they're on opposite sides of the vehicle with the downwards direction being different on each of them. So the rotation on these is actually inverted. So if I um, turn the yaw right and set that to a negative value, that will fix this. And uh, rather than trying to logic this out every time I do it, I find it a lot easier just to slap down this vehicle controller and test things manually to make sure that they're doing what I want before I actually cut the vehicle loose and add an AI to it. So now you can see if I hit Y, assume that these spin blocks are already spinning from my need to go upwards at all times. Now I have a right spin block providing forwards translational control authority, and I have a left spin block providing backwards control, rotational control authority, or translational rather. Um, those are to the right and left of the center of mass, so those are effectively going to act as a differential steering mechanism, and they're going to yaw me to the left. If I hit I here, I have the exact opposite occurring. Those are going to yaw me to the right. That's exactly what I want, assuming that the spin blocks over here are always being driven in the upwards direction. Okay, so uh, that is more or less exactly what we want. So we've got yaw, pitch, and roll. Now, if we hit uh, upwards, this is the up key. Uh, that is going to simulate the need to go upwards. Okay, yep, that is pretty much what we want. We have downwards. Yep, that's pretty much what we want. These are relatively balanced because even though I've got two rotors that are exactly twice as powerful as this rotor in the front, the center of mass is also twice as close to these rotors, roughly, more or less, uh, as it is to this rotor in the front. So, effectively, our thrust is pretty much balanced, except for the fact that we're using 80% thrust back here and 100% thrust up here. So, what I'm going to do to counter that 
is obviously bring this down to 80%. I'm also going to bump the pitch control down a little bit too, just so that if we get a pitch up signal, we're not overriding everything. Uh, in fact, I'm going to bump that down to 50%. Um, yeah, just so that we have a little more control authority being used for altitude, even if we have a strong pitch signal. All right, so that's pretty much everything. We have pitch control, we have roll control, we have uh, yaw control. Those are our three rotational axes, so we've got perfect there. We have lift control. Uh, that is perfect there. Uh, if I give this thing a forward signal, uh, that is not doing anything right now, and that's not ideal. So let's see what we've got for our angle control here. Now that is set for translational movement. So my guess is that the vehicle controller here is not actually setting up forwards translational movement, so not ideal. Um, we're just going to have to assume that these are correct for now, when in fact I know that they are not correct. Uh, if I go over here, you remember that I had to reverse the yaw control on the left side? I'm going to have to reverse the forwards control too, in order to get that to work correctly. Okay, so since we can't test the forwards and back movement control, I was trying to test that with an ACB a moment ago, and it didn't work for me very well. So we're just going to go ahead and say that, uh, yes, we probably have the front forwards and backwards direction set up correctly, and we should be able to diagnose that fairly quickly if we don't. So the last thing to do here is to remove our controller here so we're not interfering accidentally and set up an AI. AI is going to be fairly simple to set up. We're going to set it up on the bottom so that we have a nice uh, open platform for some simple detection, which I haven't really gone over yet, but we will be getting to that in a future video. Uh, we just are going to set up some connectors. We're going to set up, uh, in this case, uh, we only need five PIDs, but we're going to set up six just because. And that is pretty much that. Um, these PIDs will be able to control us effectively. Yeah, this should be enough to get us flying. So first things first, we're going to set up a behavior. We're going to set up a point at behavior. Uh, we're just going to use a basic hover movement and a basic point at and maintain distance. Now, uh, that you can see already this is trying to take control of the vehicle. And already we are actually flying. And yeah, it's, it's doing more or less what I want it to. However, it's really wobbly. So let's go ahead and start setting up PIDs. Uh, first things first, let's set up our behavior here to maintain a combat altitude of 200. Uh, let's go into adjustments and say, this min altitude above water is really low. Let's go ahead and just set that near to our combat altitude. And so this should try and fly us up to a height of 200 meters. Looks like it's getting there eventually. Next thing, we're going to enable the PID controllers in every direction. Uh, even though technically the uh, strafe is not really going to do anything as of yet. So uh, these are all enabled. Let's go ahead and tune them. We've got a yaw controller, we're going to set that to 0.01 to start, we're going to set that to a 7 second integral, and a 0.5 second derivative. Uh, yeah, that seems to have done the trick for yaw. Uh, let's go ahead and set pitch, we're going to set that with the same base values for now, and that is probably good enough for now. Oop, uh, looks like our integral time did not take. And let's see, looks like we could use probably a bit more gain on this in order to achieve our desired set point quicker. And yeah, that seems to be doing all right. Got a little bit of a waiver in here. That's probably from derivative being too aggressive. And yeah, okay, so that's pitch. Now let's go ahead and take care of roll. Let's set that to 0 0.01 for now. Let's set that to an integral time of 7, a derivative time of 0.5. That's my base values that I like to use. And okay, our yaw is stable, or our roll rather, is stabilized. Now let's set forward back. Uh, again, we're going to set that to point. Let's set, keep that at 0.1 for now because this is a more desirable control thing. 
and we're effectively relying on our vehicle weight for this indirectly. Long story short, we're just going to go with the 7 and 0.5 values for derivative. And we're going to do the same for strafe and hover. And that should give us a fairly stable flying vehicle. Alright, so uh, now if we actually spawn in an enemy and turn off its ability to fire, you can see we turn to point at that vehicle and we start flying towards it. Looks like our pitch control is very much not stabilized. We're actually wobbling all over the place. Uh, let's reduce the gain on that to 0.02. And yeah, we're still wobbling all over the place. Let's increase the gain. Let's just, or the integral rather. Let's just double the integral term on that. These spikes in here are likely from actual control signal being uh, requested. And yeah, so let's go ahead and stabilize. Looks like we're getting, yeah, quite a wobble in the pitch direction. So let's go ahead and add more derivative in here. And that's fairly well stabilized. Okay, so uh, now you can see all of the forces that are being applied through here. Um, one thing that's happening, we're noticing these uh, tilt rotors are tilting quite a bit in each direction. And this goes back to the debugging I had mentioned earlier. These spin blocks we, in the angle control, if I look at the angles down here, these can be set to 36 um, two sets of 36. Uh, this is actually the absolute maximum that I would want these to be able to be set to, because if you add 36 and 36, you come up with 72. Now 72 is very close to 90. That's an important number, uh, because 90 means that this spin block would be pointing straight forwards or straight backwards, depending on the controls it's getting. And if you get straight forwards or straight backwards, that's not good. Uh, because effectively you are abdicating this rotor's ability to control the roll and vertical lift. So uh, effectively these rotors are not existing anymore for the purposes of roll and lift. They're only being used at that point for yaw and forge back control authority. So this is the absolute maximum that value that I would use here, and even this is probably a bit much. Okay, so it looks like we actually are wobbling the forwards back control quite a bit. So that is a PID tuning thing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tune these PIDs up a little off camera. You can go view my PID tuning tutorial if you want more info on that. But uh, you don't need to sit here and watch me do all this. All right, so in this case, I have determined that the AI is actually sending these signals to pitch up and down. So it's not actually the PID's fault. In order to counter this, what I'm going to do is in the PIDs, I'm going to, in the pitch controller, I'm going to enable a fake set point. And that just means that I want zero pitch. Uh, so I'm going to bump the integral time back down a little bit, and we're going to shoot for zero pitch. Uh, now you can see we're still getting pitch. Now why is that? This is because the pitch control here is not perfect. Uh, effectively, I'm trying to use this front uh, rotor for pitch control and it's being fought constantly by the movement of these other two rotors in the back. This is one of the downsides of tilt rotors. Because there are so many things going on with so many different movements going on all at the same time, uh, your movement is actually very difficult to stabilize. So uh, in this case I set pitch to zero. That's still not perfect. If I was to go in here and work on uh, setting up the other PIDs, I could set up, um, say, the roll control to also want to be zero. But that's really not going to do me a whole lot of good because uh, I'm getting control signals from the AI and those are being translated to very wonky movements. Uh, that is the downside of tilt rotors, but the more tilt rotors you have on a vehicle, the more or the easier this is to control, and the more fixed rotors on a, you have on a vehicle, the easier this is to control. 
So right now I'm trying to set a pitch of zero. If I was to go in here and make my pitch PA, or pitch controller much more aggressive with gain, uh, this would actually be able to control the pitch a lot better. So now you can see I'm getting a much better fake set point of zero because I'm actually controlling this uh, much more aggressively. Uh, so you can kind of fight this if you have enough control authority by uh, bumping gains around in your PIDs. Uh, if I was to do that also with the yaw, uh, I could set this up to a 0.1 yaw control, and that would, in theory, fight yaw being introduced by other stuff much more, but it's also, that's also going to start fighting my roll and other control authority, and really this is going to be extremely difficult to control. So um, PIDs are much more difficult to tune under this uh, set of circumstances, and it's just a much more difficult uh, set of things to deal with. So uh, that is the difficulty with tilt rotor vehicles. Uh, setting my derivative up seems to have helped, but just know that you're going to be fighting your PIDs and your AI controls a lot more with a tilt rotor vehicle than you would normally. Uh, again, that's alleviated by adding more control authority, both in the form of fixed uh, control authority, like this fixed rotor up front, and moving control authority like the tilt rotors in the back. The more of these I add, the more control authority I have, and the more different, or the less I have to work each of these to get the control I want. So, um, yeah, that's really kind of a tricky balance to find, and it's really dependent on the vehicle. If I started adding weight to this vehicle or changing the center of mass around, it would change on this vehicle what exactly I wanted to do. So, yeah, all of that is very tricky to set up, and it's really down to the specific vehicle. Just know that uh, if you have one fixed uh, set of control authority being used for pitch, you can use your tilt rotors on the sides to control literally everything else. If I go in here to PIDs, I'm going to, on the roll control, I don't have a fake set point, that's good. Uh, yaw control does not have fake set point, and pitch. I'm actually going to turn off the fake set point because I want this to be able to control its pitch a little bit. And there we go. Um, if I wanted to disable pitch in the AI, I could turn off max pitch to target, and that would effectively do what I want. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that here because this particular vehicle is not going to respond very well to that. Alright, so in this case, I've got a fairly well-controlled vehicle, and to prove that, if I go in here and say I want to go to 1500, com or, yeah, 1500 combat distance, uh, the tilt rotors are going to tilt backwards, and you can see I'm getting backwards force from both of those. I'm still able to control my yaw and pitch and roll and all that st uh, fun stuff, but it's a little tricky, so I'm wobbling around a lot. That would be helped out greatly if I had more control authority on this vehicle in the form of other thrusters. So uh, now I am getting away from the target vehicle. If I look at the distance here, yeah, this isn't particularly fast. So my distance to this vehicle is not increasing particularly quickly. I do not have a lot of forward back control authority due to how few rotors I have on this. That's just something I have to deal with. So uh, in this case, this is the absolute minimal amount of control authority and I'm doing this mostly just to prove a point. In most cases, I would have a lot more uh, thrust on this vehicle. I would have fixed thrusters on here, either from jet engines, or I would have four tilt rotors, or even six, or uh, however many I wanted to add. Uh, I might have more fixed rotors on this vehicle. Basically, I'm going to do as much as I possibly can to make sure that these tilt rotors on the sides are uh, having to do as little work as possible in each direction so that I can use them more effectively to control every direction, if that makes sense. So, um, also the less your rotors have to do roll, the more effectively they'll be able to control everything else. That is one downside of this. If I was to stick roll thrusters over here, uh, the end, take roll control authority away from these um, uh, data blades over here, uh, that would go a very long ways towards stabilizing this vehicle. That's something to note that's very important about tilt rotors. Um, so right now we probably have reached our goal. 
and in fact we've overshot it quite a bit. So yeah, uh, we should be trying to get back towards the vehicle. Uh, not entirely sure why we aren't, unless that's an AI thing. If we take a look at our PIDs, our Ford's back controller, yeah, it looks like our drive is still backwards. Let's go ahead and set that back up to 0 0.05. And yeah, that's... yeah. We're still getting backwards control authority, that's just something the AI is telling us to do. Not entirely sure why, but uh, if we take a look at our AI specifically with this maneuver, what we can do, you'll note that we don't have left-right strafe movement on this. We can use roll for this. So if I use 10 degrees of roll, say, and we now have the ability to strafe, now if I set up left and right evasion time, uh, we should start evading left and right for two seconds each. So we'll see we're tilting right for two seconds, left for two seconds, right for two seconds, left for two seconds. Now that's not really enough to give us any uh, great amount of pitch, or uh, uh, sideways velocity, straight velocity I should say. Uh, so we probably want to bump that either the evasion time up or the roll time up in the maneuver, the roll angle rather. If I set this up to, say, 45, that should give us a much more pronounced roll. Every two seconds we are wobbling back and forth, and our PID is actually fighting this because that is, it looks like wobble to the PID, and we've set it up to not really wobble like that. So uh, if I go ahead and increase the evasion times to, let's just go with 10 seconds here. Yeah, 10 seconds for each. So this is going to go to 45 degrees. You'll note that this is having a hard time keeping the nose on the target because the roll control, uh, we do not have roll control authority in front of the center of mass. Uh, so effectively we're having to use yaw control authority to fight the fact that we're using this roll back here. And that's, we're effectively kind of mixing uh, jet style movement with uh, six-axis style movement in a very strange way. Uh, just know that this is going to be very difficult to control. This would be much easier if I had four tilt rotors. So, yeah. Um, still, we are more or less doing what we want, and we're staying at about 1,500 meters away. We are getting our sideways strafe. If we open up our, the V menu here, you can see we've got a velocity that is constantly going up and down. That is good because that means that we are going to be very difficult to hit with cannons. If I detach my camera here and just look at this vehicle from the perspective of the Marauder, uh, this is not going to be easy to hit with a cannon. This is not going to be easy to hit at all. Uh, if I try and shoot this thing right now, then I'm going to miss because I was aiming at its previous location. If I try and shoot it now, I'm going to miss because, well, it's dropping, it's moving to the right, and now it just eliminated all of its right straight velocity, or left straight velocity from the uh, perspective of the vehicle. So uh, this is a very evasive, very hard to hit vehicle because of this hover uh, control with the strafe that we've set up. And all of this is coming from just three rotors and two spin blocks. So that is a spin block, uh, or rather a tilt rotor vehicle. Uh, that's really the basis of how you would set one up. And there's a lot of complexity to it, and there's just a lot of different variables there. But when you set these things up correctly, they are so hard to hit and so, so effective. That's all for today, and hope you'll join me for the next tutorial. Uh, next time we are going to start getting into weaponry, and we're going to start that off by looking at detection systems. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.